opportunity to sum up. We'll reverse the speaking order from the way that everybody opened. So to start, it will be Michael. Oh, so much. Yeah, I'm here for one issue. But I would like to say that you party because animals affect everybody in so many different ways. <coughs> if we were all more compassionate to animals, I think we would all be more compassionate to each other as well. Uh, there have been studies done that show people that abuse animals go on to abuse people. I think we have so much to learn about animals. They're not just things to be looked at, to be used, play sport with eaten for whatever reason, are there as sentient beings in their own right. It should be given rights under the legislation so that people just can't come along and abuse them and treat them any way they can. For example, food animals have no rights. They are considered as commodities. Mm. Right? Equivalent of that, that's all it is. And you can do whatever you want with that. You do the same with food animals. Take a pet animal on the other hand. I've got rights, the RSPCA can take action. If you hit an, hit an animal, they can take action against you. You do that to a food animal, nobody cares, nobody wants to know about it. And part of the animal justice uh, mission is to switch that light bulb on in people's heads. Don't be a speciesist. A lot of people think humans are top of the food chain, they are at the moment. What happens if someone comes along and says, no, they're not cool, young, humans, farm, seed, I don't know where they're, a lot of people here probably old enough to have seen a film called Soil and Green. <laughs> it's where people right in the towns were scooped up in mortgages, sent off to the factories and processed as food. Soil and was the food, the colour was the grazing of the people. I'll leave you with that talk, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to suggest three reasons why CDP is a solid choice for your first vote. The first, uh, we have a proven track record of over 30 years in, to quote John Chip from last century, keeping the bastards honest. Uh, now, in case you're meeting down on who the bastards are, major parties make mistakes. I'm sure if we all just stop for a minute and think about them, we've got the Newcastle train closure, right here we've got West Connects, we've got, if you're thinking the ADA ALP gets off scot free, some of you might remember the Metro that was going to go Victoria Road, huge amounts of money spent, benefit to the community, zero, it's nothing got built. So we're here to keep the bastards honest. In terms of industries that we want to have strict rules on, gambling, we want strict rules there. We want strict rules on alcohol industry because domestic violence is a problem in the community, king hits are a problem in the community, and wherever there's a rule that can protect the community, we want to look strongly in implementing that. The second reason, I suppose it comes down to keeping the bastards honest, that We've been in Parliament for over 30 years in the upper house and not a hint of corruption. Uh, a lot over the years we've had problems with Labor corrupt MPs, we've had problems with the Coalition corrupt MPs. So we're an honest choice for uh, that key role in the balance of power in the upper house and if elected, I'll fight for the seat of the new chairman. And the third reason you might think of um, protecting the vulnerable, and we really try and seek out the vulnerable in the community, particularly the vulnerable that don't have a voice. I mean, you've got people uh, in low wage situations, I mean, it's great that they've got unions as their advocate, and obviously, in some contexts, you have business with the coalition as their advocate, obviously, with Obama. Hopefully, you have the National Party, but there are a lot of times when people in the bush use us as their advocate. His National Party doesn't listen to them. Uh, just one case study on that speaking up for the vulnerable. Uh, you might have seen a case in South Australia reported on television where a Greek lady was at risk of being deported and her sole crime was that she did not move in with her partner prior to marriage. Now I think most people would say whether you move in with your partner prior to marriage or when you marry is a personal choice and the last thing you want is a government threatening to the 
support you over that type of personal choice. And uh, I personally rang Xenophon's office and said, get in there and fight for this family so they don't get deported for a personal choice. First of all, I'd like to thank you all very much for giving up some of your Friday night to be here to listen to this. I think, as was said earlier, that we are suffering from a real trust deficit in politics in New South Wales. And one of the things that I have been trying to do and we have been trying to do in this campaign is try and rebuild that trust and try and reshape and re-engage and reactivate our progressive community in the way politics is done. For me, the reason that I stand or sit here, actually, before you at the moment is because I'm seeking your support to be able to be the first member for the new seat at Newtown, to represent this community. And I guess I can give you my commitment that when I do that, that I'll always sit here, I'll always talk with you, I will always listen to your questions, I will always debate with you if I don't agree with your opinion and it doesn't align with our policy, but I can commit to always putting and prioritising the community interest first. I can commit to say that we won't put billions of dollars into a dirty tollway like West Connects. I can commit to say that I will work tirelessly until we transition this state so we can be a leader in a renewable energy future. And I can say to you that not only will we, if we make the Greens, the new seat of Newtown Green from the very beginning, have the opportunity to make history by electing the first Green woman to the lower house in the New South Wales Parliament, but we will also have the opportunity to work together and activate our community to make and reshape the way that politics is headed in New South Wales. I believe that our community can do this, and I would, that is why I would like to seek your support to be able to have that opportunity to represent you after much training. Thank you. Currently, there's no public discussion in, uh, in Sydney, or not that I'm hearing about this city doubling in size every 35 years. Uh, but we're here uh, at every state election trying to work out how to live with the, the problems that that's creating. We're talking about you know, not wanting to have to live in nine stories, skyscrapers, not to have more motorways, and not to have our urban space taken away, and our public spaces taken away. Uh, I wish that we could have that discussion, um, and, but if the Australian Cyclist Party has any role in influencing uh, the way government is run in the next term in New South Wales, we'll be doing our bit to make sure that there, there is funding and constant focus on active transport. Uh, we're going to be particularly focused in those areas currently $700 per person being spent on, on road systems and about $3.40 on cycle facilities. So we really want to, to get to the, uh, uh, the state departments, particularly the uh, RMS, Roads and Maritime Services, who are currently just a, an organisation that's looking after vehicular traffic and we want them to be more focused on transport as a whole. Uh, we want to push the Premier's Department and the Planning Department to try and solve the problem with local councils who are responsible for, uh, for so many of the roads that haven't got the funding. So that, that can't change unless there is a determination at the, uh, at the level of state departments to actually provide leadership to, to implement the plans that are currently sitting on shelves and to finance those plans. We also will push for the Education Department to run programs in all schools, including non-government schools, uh, with targets uh, to change, in conjunction with councils, the, the areas immediately around the schools so that they are friendly for kids to, to uh, for everybody to move around in, uh, in more active ways. It, it's just shocking that people are driving kids to school often in four-wheel drives. It's got to change, but that voice is not getting heard in state parliament and it's 
It's through Parliament, it's through these departments that we have to get these changes underway. But in the background, we've got an ever-growing city and these pressures are just going to grow bigger and bigger. And I, I personally think that people are going to have to start having public discussions about just how far we're going to... Are we really going to accept a city that just grows bigger and bigger forever and ever? Because if we, if we do, I can't see us solving these problems. Thank you. Friends, that brings us to the end of our candidates forum tonight. Um, can you please thank all of the candidates again for their time? And thank you all for your participation and questions. The Friends of Earth and Bill depends upon the participation of the local community to do the work that we do of informing and advocating for the community. Uh, if you live or work in Erskineville or in the surrounding suburbs, we invite you, if you're not already, to become a member. There's some sign-up sheets just outside. Also, you can sign up for our electronic mailing list, uh, which entitles you to receive our regular newsletter, Ability Voice. But thank you once again for coming, and good night.